What's up, everybody? With another episode of the NBA Draft, NBA 2K14 Draft class on PlayStation 4. And this is Jahi Carson, Arizona State. Uh, they get put out of the uh, NCAA tournament in the first round. Carson had a good game. I really like the overall base of Jahi, of Jahi Carson's game. Actually, you know, he's a little a smaller guy, but he is ridiculous. Re- ridiculously fast i'm talking about lightning quick he has a ridiculous game off the dribble um just just a it's exciting kind of a player now the problem with jahi carson is decision making turnovers that's the biggest issue with him uh, i think there's no doubt he can score there's actually no not no doubt that he can actually even create even though he's never he averaged only like 4.6 assists this season he did this shot, I believe, eight assists uh, when Arizona State lost in the first round or the second round, technically, in the NCAA tournament. But, you know, that's his issue. He's turned, over, turned the ball over three and a half times a game, both his freshman and sophomore seasons. He, If you look at the dunk rating there, that's pretty high for a guy 5'10", but Jahi Carson is that kind of an athlete. He can explode. He's a scorer for sure, 18 and a half points. Uh, freshman year, uh, he's a redshirt fresh, freshman, 18.6 points this past season. So the guy can score, but you see, I took off some took off some ratings for that ball security because of all of the turnovers, and just because he generally um, just doesn't doesn't take care of the ball that well. Um, defense, he also doesn't. He's not a great defender. Not a great defender either. So if it's just on physical talent. Jahi Carson is the business. He is. But he's a little small. And uh, also we worry about the uh, ability to take care of the ball. But you see the uh, acrobat ankle breaker is definitely in order for him. Because, uh, that's the, like I said, that's the kind of athlete he is. He's that vicious, off-the-dribble kind of a dude. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with his career in the NBA I think there's no doubt he gets drafted he may even be the type of dude I could see him playing a a game or a style similar to Nate Robinson Uh, you know kind of like that undersized point guard slash two guard that just gets brought off the bench for uh, offensive explosion I could you know really see him fitting into that kind of a mold because I just don't know if he's going to be able to adapt and change his game to play like a conventional point guard. Which, of course, from a physical standpoint, that's the way he pretty much uh, measures up at 5'10". Can't play the two guard, really. Not, you know, not like as a starting two guard. So, it's either going to be that Nate Robinson role or either he's going to start to really display the ability to run an offense. If he does that, then... You never know. I mean, he could be one of the better point guard prospects in this draft. But if he doesn't, then I think he's going to have to be kind of like that niche player off the bench. So let's look at the signature uh, signature uh, movements or maneuvers or whatever, however you want to call it. Jahi wears the two leg sleeves down. Socks are usually a little bit higher than that, but if... It's weird the way these go because the the right leg sleeves kind of go down a little bit too far. Uh, So, you know, for you to still be able to see the socks. So, you just kind of make it the best way I can. He has some nasty dribble moves, though. So, I tried to let him really go with it with there. And as far as a dunker, you know, I thought that was enough. You know, I mean, you got to think about he is 5'10". So, he's throwing it down and it's looking like he's throwing it down. But can't go too crazy. You know what I mean? All right, so let it, let's let move on. It's another point guard prospect whose name is Samaj Christian. Samaj Christian, we gave him a 68 overall. He averaged 17 points a game this year for uh, Xavier. Like his game, he does not have necessarily the same type of shake and bake kind of move. Shout out to shake and bake, my boy. Uh, he doesn't have that same type of shake and bake move that... Um, You know, that Jahi Carson has. But he does have a nice off-the-dribble game. A little bit stronger, too. Just a bigger guy. 6'3", 190 pounds. But um, I I, I think his game 
He's he has improved his jump shot, but I still think he needs to come a little bit more with it. Shot thirty eight point eight percent from the free, uh, from three point range this year, but that's a little bit deceiving because sometimes you got to look at the guy's three point percentage. You got to really look at how many three pointers are they taking. You know, because if they're not taking a lot, then you you can't really just automatically consider them to be like a really good three point shooter. Like he only took forty nine threes this year, so he made nineteen, which is a good percentage, but are you really looking at that like, hey, yeah, this guy's a real, you know, knockdown three-point shooter? So I tried to take that into consideration when I gave him his three-point rating. Uh, also, he's shooting just about 67% from free throw range. So you might have looked at that and wondered why that was what that is. But then again, like I said, he's averaging 17 points a game. So he finds a way to put the ball in the basket. What I really think Samaj Christian has a chance to really be really good at is on defense. He has really long arms for a guy 6'3". He's averaging a little over, he averaged a little over still a game, both as a freshman and a sophomore. So um, I think that that is like where he really has the opportunity to really stand out. So we'll see. Um, like when you look at him physically, he kind of puts me in the mind, in the mind of, uh, uh, I, I, would, I believe it's Rodrigue Bobois. Uh, for the Mavericks or a guy who never actually made the NBA who was a pretty decent talent, Romain Sato, or he might have had like a cup of coffee in the NBA, I ain't sure. But those two guys, uh, Samaj Christian reminds me a little bit of them. So obviously I'm not projecting him out to be like a star or anything. You looked at the potential rating I gave him. It's not super, super high. but uh, And that, of course, does match. Uh, he's a decent playmaker. Um, just over four assists a game, you know. So this is a dude that is definitely set for the second round. So if, again, I'm gonna say this as much as possible because I still get comments of people asking for me to do certain guys now or whatever. Um, if you're wondering why, like uh, some of the players that you see me doing now are second round talents, and some of the first round guys haven't been done yet, it's because I am going in alphabetical order. So I will be out of the seas by the end of this episode. So we'll be moving on from there. But I just want to flip through and show you what's the deal with Samaj Christian from LSU. I mean, not LSU. What did I get LSU? From Xavier. All right, now, he doesn't jump much on his jump shot. I noticed that in the uh, footage that I watched. So I tried to give him, you know, kind of just a little hop. Uh, so, yeah, we tried to come up as... As clean as possible with that. The shimmy shots. Protect jumper. Your crossover wasn't like real lightning quick either. So that's why I didn't didn't make that a little bit too, you know. I didn't make it too crazy. As a dunker, it was pretty basic. It wasn't flying. You know, but definitely can put it down. So that is it for Samaj Christian. So now let's move on to the third guys I mentioned in the last episode I'll be doing five guys per uh, episode now so we're going to Cameron Clark now the, the tripped out thing about Cameron Clark you see I only gave him a 63 overall is that some draft boards don't even actually have him penciled in as a guy that's going to get drafted so it's a chance he doesn't get drafted at all he is 6'7 about 210, 211 pounds, and I don't know, man. His game is almost like a little bit of a tweener, um, but he's not that strong of a rebounder. And he really, his this his senior year, he really jumped quite a quite a bit. He, I mean, he had a huge year, and it was weird because his his college career went really odd. As a freshman, he averaged nine points a game. Then as a sophomore, he dropped to eight and a half. Then as a junior, he dropped all the way to six and a half. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, as, as a senior, it jumps up to 15.6. So it's hard to make out what the deal is with him. To be quite honest, I would be surprised if he stuck in the NBA. To me, Cameron Clark seems like a dude that is destined to spend the majority of his professional playing career playing overseas. He just doesn't have that extra factor to his game that makes me say hey yeah you're gonna stick now he did shoot 
43% from three-point range this year, which is a good thing, especially being only six foot seven. He's going to need to be able to do that. And he knocked down 37 out of 85 threes. So it's a little bit better, a little bit better than what we saw with, Ro, um, I almost called him Romain Sato, with Samaj Christian. But I don't know, man. Like I'm saying, I, I just, I'm not sure about him. But I do know that he hustles real hard. Hustle, hustle real hard. He does. But I don't know, man. We'll see. Take a look at some of these tendencies. Uh, gets, he does get some putbacks. Sometimes when I watch him, and, and I'm going to say this, keep this in the proper perspective. When I watched him a little bit, it felt like a poor man's, like a poor man's TJ Warren or it's, it's Carl Landry or something. Because sometimes I see him down close to the basket. And I'm like, oh, man, the guy's kind of tough battling for shots, you know, getting that in-between game kind of down like Carl Landry. Then other times I look at him and I, you know, manufacturing of the buckets kind of reminded me a little bit of T.J. Warren. And I'm y'all will find out when I get to T.J. Warren, I'm not the biggest T.J. Warren fan. Not not as an NBA prospect. I think he's an awesome NBA. Uh, I think he's an awesome college player. But I don't know. I'm not sold on the, on him in the NBA. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to create his own shot. I don't know about him defending small forwards in the NBA. I mean, he's not a great athlete. I had a question on Twitter. I asked, I said, you know, out of the guys, these two guys are not spectacular athletes, but they put up big-time numbers in college, T.J. Warren and Doug, Doug McDermott. Which one do you guys think is, like, the best prospect between T.J. Warren and Doug McDermott? Because we've seen quite a few times, we've seen players who like totally lit it up in college and then got to the NBA and just couldn't quite find their niche. It's a lot of players like that, you know. So Doug McDermott and TJ Warren seem like the type two those type of players that could end up having that same type of career in the NBA or maybe they're not. Maybe maybe they'll actually be stars. I don't know. I don't think so, but I definitely think Doug McDermott is going to play in the NBA. Uh, but I think in the NBA, he's going to be a spot-up shooter. I don't think, you know, going for these 25, 30 points a night, I just I don't see it. But let's move it on. We're going to Jordan Clarkson from Missouri. Big point guard. Six foot five, long arm, strong, very productive um, in college uh, this season. And actually, when he was with uh, Tulane, he, was, he went to Tulsa, I'm sorry, and um, – he had to sit out last season, but this season he came in 17.6 points a game, 3.3 assists, 3.9 rebounds per game. And obviously the best part, probably the best part about his game is the fact that he's 6'5", legit 6'5", and a, and a you know pretty legit point guard. So that's probably the best part of his game, but we'll see what happens. A lot of people, some, you know, I, I won't say a lot of people, I think it's split. You got some that are really high on Jordan Clarkson. Some are like, man, this guy's one of the better players. You look at some of the draft boys, they got him going anywhere from like 14 to 20. Then you see some draft boys, you see him in the second round. Uh, I haven't seen a draft board that didn't have him being selected at all. So I think he's definitely going to hear his name called in the draft. Where he hears his name called is a big thing. The, now, I talked about the best part of his game. Now, the worst part of his game is that erratic jump shot. Just shooting 28% from three-point range, and that's down from where it was when he was at uh, Tulsa. So he hasn't shot it well since coming to Missouri. So um, I know you're a big point guard, but you still have that need as a perimeter player to be able to knock down the outside shot consistently. But the good thing about the jump shot, obviously, is... It's something that you can work on and get if you don't have initially. So uh, that's the main thing that Jordan Clarkson needs to make sure he can add to his game so that he can be a more well-rounded guard because the outside shooting is lacking a bit. So he don't take a lot of them. Uh, only 15.5% of the shots that he took was uh, were three-pointers. So... He's definitely, he's trying to get to the basket, like, 
almost every time he touches it. Uh, part of that could probably change if he did in, uh, improve his three-point shooting. He may, you know, be more apt to take that shot. But now he's trying to go to the basket. I really liked Missouri's team this year. Um, not like, you know, thought they were contenders or anything, but they had an inter interesting uh, little set of guards and perimeter players there, so I kind of liked them. Uh, but they didn't, I think they had a little bit of a di uh, disappointing season based off of the uh, the backcourt that they had. I thought they probably had uh, some ideas that they might be able to do a little bit better, but didn't work out that way. Let's look at the signature uh, signature moves. Pretty basic stuff. Step back. Shimmy. Nice crossover. Decent spin. The hesitation. Swing man moves. And he's not a huge leaper. So I didn't go crazy with the dunks at all. So. That is your man Jordan Clarkson. Last man of this particular episode is Justin Cobbs. Gave him a 67. Plays for Cal. 15.7 points a game, 5.8 assists, 2.8 rebounds. Justin Cobbs is a tough dude. He is a tough, straight-up leader. He's the type of dude that is probably a better leader and probably a, like, a better like, floor general than he is like an actual player from a talent standpoint. They say 6'3". That might be a little bit generous. It might be more like 6'1", but that's not a big deal. Um, I like the... F I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm not completely sure about him as an NBA point guard either. But I do know that he's physically strong, which I think could make him a good on-ball defender. Um, he's a pretty good clutch shooter, too. Uh, knocked down a couple game winners for Cal this year. Uh, and I think he can, you know, he's not a horrible three-point shooter. He can definitely be better, but I think he has to stroke to get better because if you look at the free throw shooting, he's been over an 80% free throw shooter his entire college career. So um, that makes me think that with some repetition and working on the three-point shot, he can get it even better than where it is, which is 32%, which is just okay. Um, but... Justin Cobb's path to trying to make the NBA and stay there, you know, as a like a legitimate backup point guard. I uh, see I gave him the floor general because of how, the type of leader that he is. But I think his path is going to be about playing lockdown defense and really running an offense well. Uh, not going to probably ever be the break you down off the dribble, get to the basket, creating for other kind of guy, others kind of a guy. But I do think that as a guy who is supposed to run the offense, play hard defense when uh, he comes in off the bench, and have the ability to knock down an open shot from deep, that's his ticket. And if he can do that, I think he'll, uh, he could have a career in the NBA. Because like I said, his tangibles and all of that physical strength as well is definitely where it needs to be. So I'm going to move through the rest of the tendencies for Justin Cobbs and just talk a little bit about like some of the guys that's coming next like I said we're getting into the D's uh, and I'm going to try this video is going to more than likely drop because um, I'm recording it what is this it's early Sunday now Saturday night tech, uh, early Sunday technically kind of like Saturday night for me uh, it's going to drop on Sunday about probably like around 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. on Sunday Central Time. And uh, before that, I think I'm going to have a WWE community, uh, community Creations video drop. We're going to look at some stadiums. So that should already be up on the channel. And um, then I think on Monday, on Monday morning, look for it probably around 10 a.m. on Monday morning. We're going to do the next one. So it's going to be basically what you're going to what you're going to be getting is two straight NBA draft class videos because I am trying to get this finished. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I don't think I mentioned this. Justin Cobb's a pretty good leaper. So that's why I got him with some decent dunks, at least for a, little, for a smaller guy. 
So that'll do it for this episode of the NBA 2K14 Draft Class for PlayStation 4. I appreciate y'all watching.